Australian farmers are grappling with a pressing concern. The invasion of millions of invasive animals wreaking havoc on their agricultural landscapes. This onslaught poses a grave threat to crops, livestock, and the delicate balance of the ecosystem. The economic toll is staggering, with farmers facing substantial losses. In response, innovative strategies are being employed. Ranging from protective fencing to collaborative initiatives with wildlife management experts. Join us as we look at how Australian farmers deal with millions of invasive animals. In the late 19th century, Australia faced an ecological menace that would change its landscape forever, the European rabbit. Imported with the intention of providing sport for settlers, these seemingly harmless creatures soon turned into one of the fastest spreading instances of an invasive mammal in the continent's history. With an estimated 200 million feral rabbits causing widespread damage to native species and crops, Australia's farmers found themselves in a perpetual struggle against these prolific pests. The origin of the rabbit invasion dates back to 1859, when Thomas Austin, a wealthy settler in Victoria, introduced 13 European rabbits for sport. In a mere 50 years, these rabbits had proliferated across the entire continent wreaking havoc on crops, land, and native ecosystems. The absence of natural predators and the rabbit's remarkable reproductive capabilities, with more than four litters a year and up to five kits per litter, created a formidable challenge for Australian farmers. The impact of the invasive rabbits was devastating, leading to soil erosion, agricultural damage, and a decline in native plant and animal species. The Commonwealth Environment Protection and Biodiversity Conservation Act 1999 recognized the various threats posed by feral rabbits, including land degradation. The battle against invasive rabbits prompted various strategies from government researchers, biologists, and farmers. Early attempts involved the construction of fences, including the ambitious Western Australia fence, which unfortunately proved ineffective as it merely enclosed rabbits already present in the state. Farmers resorted to destroying rabbit warrens, disrupting the breeding grounds, and reducing population growth. This method remains in use today, particularly on accessible lands. However, as rabbits are highly adaptive, efforts have escalated to biocontrol measures. In the 1950s, the government introduced the Myxoma virus, a rabbit-specific virus, into southeastern Australia. While initially effective, the rabbits developed immunity, necessitating a shift in strategy. The rabbit hemorrhagic disease virus, RHDV, identified in the 1980s, brought a new weapon to the arsenal. Released in 1996, RHDV significantly reduced rabbit numbers, especially in dry areas, although the rabbits developed resistance over time. Beyond viruses, poison has emerged as a popular method for controlling rabbit populations. Sodium fluoroacetate, with a mortality rate exceeding 90%, was commonly used. Additionally, carbon monoxide and phosphine were employed to fumigate burrows. However, introducing viruses into the wild proved the most cost-effective approach, despite the need for ongoing research to develop more potent strains of RHDV. In contemporary times, Australian farmers and the government continue to grapple with invasive rabbits using a combination of traditional and innovative methods. One significant development is the RHDV2 virus, created in 2017. This virus has proven effective in reducing rabbit populations, albeit with some environmental concerns. The use of hunting dogs, trap cages, and knit traps demonstrates a multifaceted approach. Hunting dogs play a crucial role in detecting and chasing rabbits, while trap cages, though more costly, offer a humane alternative. 
Knit traps, despite being simple and low cost, have some drawbacks, including potential harm to rabbits. While current measures have provided some relief, the fight against invasive rabbits demands a comprehensive and sustainable approach. Conservationists and researchers are exploring integrated pest management strategies that balance ecological health with effective control. One such avenue involves biological control through the introduction of natural predators. The spotlight is on the Calissa virus, specifically the RHDVK5 strain, introduced in 2017. Despite initial successes, the rapid adaptation of rabbits raises concerns about their long-term efficacy. Ongoing research into the development of novel strains and methods to curb adaptation is paramount for the sustained success of biological controls. In addition to biological measures, advancements in technology are aiding farmers in monitoring and managing rabbit populations. Drones equipped with thermal imaging and artificial intelligence are being deployed to survey vast areas efficiently. These technologies provide real-time data, allowing farmers to identify rabbit hotspots and tailor their strategies accordingly. Furthermore, community engagement plays a crucial role in sustaining rabbit control efforts. Farmers, researchers, and local communities collaborate to share insights, best practices, and innovations. This collaborative spirit fosters a more comprehensive understanding of regional challenges and allows for the development of targeted solutions. The challenge of invasive rabbits in Australia is not isolated. It mirrors global struggles with invasive species. Sharing Australia's experiences and learning from other regions facing similar issues creates a global knowledge network. This network can contribute to the development of standardized best practices for invasive species management, ensuring a more coordinated and effective response worldwide. But are rabbits the only invasive animals that trouble Australian farmers? Stick around to find out. In Australia, farmers face a challenge in dealing with wild dogs and dingoes. Particularly when it comes to safeguarding their sheep and cattle. These predators, part of Australia's unique ecosystem, have sparked a complex battle between farmers seeking to protect their livestock and environmentalists concerned about the conservation of these native species. Dingoes, described as part dog and part wolf, have long been a part of Australian folklore. These creatures with a genetic lineage dating back 3,500 years roam from the foothills of the southeastern Alps to the arid desert outback, preying on larger animals such as kangaroos. However, their interactions with livestock, especially during a decade-long drought, have escalated tensions between farmers and conservationists. Environmentalists raise concerns not only about dingoes being targeted by farmers, but also about the risk of interbreeding with domestic dogs introduced by European settlers over two centuries ago. This interbreeding poses a threat to the genetic integrity of dingoes, marking them as vulnerable to extinction since 2004. To protect their vulnerable sheep grazing flocks, farmers have adopted a variety of strategies. One notable approach is the use of guardian animals, such as Marema sheepdogs. These animals raised alongside livestock provide continuous protection and leadership, helping to reduce losses due to dingo attacks. Government trappers like Mick Clark play a crucial role in controlling dingoes within designated zones, using methods like trapping and, at times, culling. The challenge intensifies when rogue dogs or dingoes deviate from their traditional prey, posing a significant problem for farmers. These intelligent predators adapt to various control measures, requiring farmers like Clark to continually innovate their trapping methods. Livestock guardian dogs like Marema sheepdogs have proven highly effective in protecting Australian livestock from predators. A survey of Australian farmers revealed that, with proper management, these dogs are not only successful, but also cost-effective compared to alternative methods. Raised in close contact with livestock, these dogs become integral members of the flock, offering protection against threats like dingoes. Fencing also plays a pivotal role in protecting livestock, 
Electric and predator-proof fencing act as physical barriers, preventing dingoes and wild dogs from accessing vulnerable grazing areas. The challenge lies in creating fences that are both effective and economically viable for farmers, considering the vast expanses of Australian farmland. In the ongoing fight against wild dogs and dingoes, coordinated baiting and trapping programs have emerged as crucial components of farmers' strategies. Baiting involves strategically placing baits laced with poison to control dingo populations. Trapping, as demonstrated by Mick Clark, requires a deep understanding of the predator's behavior, employing techniques such as rubber-jawed traps and using trained dingoes like Jess to locate wild ones. These programs aim to strike a balance between protecting livestock and conserving the dingo population within designated areas. However, they often face criticism from animal lovers and conservationists who argue for more humane methods and emphasize the ecological importance of dingoes in maintaining balance within ecosystems. The struggle intensifies when considering the differing opinions among farmers themselves. While some support the establishment of dingo sanctuaries, advocating for coexistence and ecological balance, Others vehemently call for aggressive measures, including shooting, trapping, or poisoning, both inside and outside protected national park borders. This diversity of perspectives among farmers reflects the complexity of finding a unified approach to wild dog and dingo management. Rangers emphasize that many problems stem from rogue dogs or dingoes that, for unknown reasons, abandon their traditional prey. These rogue individuals pose a significant challenge for trappers like Mick Clark, who emphasizes the intelligence of dingoes, stating they learn your methods and adapt, requiring constant innovation in trapping techniques. Near Canberra, where approximately 40 dog attacks occur each year, farmers face the grim reality of losses that extend beyond the immediate economic impact. Dingoes, known for sometimes killing more than they consume, raise questions about their behavior, whether it's training their young, having fun, or other unknown motives. This further complicates the task of managing these predators and underscores the need for comprehensive, humane, and effective strategies. Despite the vulnerability designation of dingoes in 2004, some Australian states have implemented controversial measures. Victoria, for instance, placed a bounty on the heads of all wild dogs, drawing criticism for potentially hastening the demise of dingo populations. Animal lovers argue that such policies contribute to pushing dingoes towards extinction, undermining the ecological role they play in controlling feral populations. In contrast, some farmers advocate for responsible dingo management, acknowledging the delicate balance required. They understand the ecological significance of dingoes in controlling kangaroo and feral goat populations, which, if left unchecked, could overgraze habitat and compete with livestock. The challenge lies in finding solutions that simultaneously protect livestock and ensure the conservation of these apex predators. Another unassuming yet potent threat looms for Australian farmers, feral cats. These seemingly harmless felines, when left unchecked, unleash a cascade of consequences on farms and the surrounding environment, particularly targeting poultry and native wildlife. Under the cloak of darkness, feral cats embark on their nightly prowls, leaving more than just paw prints in their wake. Recent research funded by the Australian government's National Environmental Science Program, NESP, has unearthed a staggering revelation. Feral cats cost the agriculture industry up to $12 million annually. These elusive predators play a silent but devastating role in transmitting parasites, such as toxoplasma and sarcocystis, to livestock and poultry. The impact is particularly pronounced in sheep farming, where toxoplasma alone is responsible for the loss of over 62,000 unborn lambs annually. The economic toll is not confined to Australia alone, as farmers in the United States and Canada also grapple with the fallout of feral cat infestations. One of the insidious aspects of feral cat infestations is their ability to act as silent carriers of diseases. Unlike visibly sick animals, infected cats often display no apparent symptoms, 
yet they shed millions of tiny parasitic eggs into the environment through their normal roaming behavior. These minuscule eggs persist in soil, pasture, and water for months, posing a persistent threat to livestock. Toxoplasma, in particular, poses a severe risk to sheep, with South Australia and Tasmania bearing the brunt of its impact. The question that echoes across is clear. How can farmers combat this hidden menace? Enter the National Environmental Science Program's Threatened Species Recovery Hub, which has spearheaded research to comprehend and manage the impacts of feral cats on native wildlife. The results not only shed light on the economic burden, but also underscore the need for practical solutions. Trapping presence as an effective control measure. The use of cage traps, informed by best practice standards, provides farmers with a targeted approach to mitigating feral cat populations. Additionally, the establishment of predator-proof fenced areas proves effective, especially in protecting vulnerable wildlife in restricted regions. Trapping feral cats demands a nuanced approach. The Felixer registered trademark grooming trap emerges as a novel and automated tool in this battle. Equipped with rangefinder sensors, it distinguishes target cats and foxes from non-target animals, delivering a measured dose of toxic gel to the intruders. This solar-powered marvel resets automatically, capturing photographic evidence and amplifying its efficiency. Moreover, baiting proves to be a potent tool in large-scale feral cat control. Poison baits such as Curiosity Registered Trademark and Eradicate Registered Trademark are designed to minimize the risk to native animals. Curiosity Registered Trademark features a small meat-based sausage containing a humane toxin, while Eradicate Registered Trademark is specific to Western Australia, injecting a synthetic toxin that aligns with the region's native resistance. While trapping addresses the feral cat population, securing housing for poultry becomes paramount in minimizing direct threats to farm animals. Robust, predator-resistant enclosures ensure that domestic fowl can graze and nest without falling victim to nocturnal prowlers. The Threat Abatement Plan for Predation by Feral Cats 2015, emphasizes a national framework for coordinated responses to feral cat impacts. This plan not only guides the management of feral cat populations, but also underscores the importance of habitat management in preserving biodiversity. As the moon rises over farmlands, there arises a collective responsibility. The Threatened Species Commissioner, Dr. Sally Box, underscores the pivotal role of community engagement in reducing the spread of disease to livestock. Responsible pet ownership, she asserts, is a cornerstone in mitigating the risks posed by domestic cat populations. With over $32 million mobilized by the Australian government since 2014 to support on-ground action and research, a call to action reverberates. But what can individual farmers do to contribute to this broader effort? Participating in broader community control efforts, farmers hold a unique position in the fight against feral cats. Beyond securing their own farms, they can actively participate in broader community control efforts. The Feral Cat Task Force, a national advisory group, champions the implementation of feral cat actions and targets in the threatened species strategy. By monitoring and reporting on feral cat management activities, farmers become integral cogs in the machinery of conservation. Now the Feral Cat Scan app comes into play. This free app serves as a community-driven initiative, encouraging individuals to record feral cat activities. From sightings to eradication efforts and impacts on native species, the app transforms every smartphone into a valuable tool in the fight against feral cats. In this collective endeavor, farmers play a crucial role in the surveillance network. Through Feral Cat Scan, they contribute real-time data, creating a dynamic map of feral cat activities. As night falls, emphasizing the critical role of fortified enclosures, the question arises, how will farmers face the next challenge in safeguarding their livestock against a different kind of cunning predator? You'll find out in a moment. Australia's vast agricultural environment is not only home to thriving crops and livestock, but also presents challenges in dealing with cunning predators like foxes. These small but highly adaptive creatures pose a significant threat to farmers, particularly in their attacks on poultry and small livestock.
Foxes, specifically the European red fox, Vulpes vulpes, have established themselves as serious pests in Australia. Known for their predatory nature, they target not only livestock, but also native animals. Their threat extends beyond immediate predation, with the potential to spread exotic diseases, including the ominous rabies. The economic toll is substantial, with estimates suggesting that foxes cost Australia more than $35 million in lost production in 2013 alone. Understanding the biology and behavior of foxes is essential before embarking on a control program. These creatures are highly mobile, covering up to 10 kilometers per night, and exhibit resilience, cryptic behavior, and opportunism. Farmers recognize the need for an integrated approach to fox control, combining various measures for effective and sustainable results. Farmers prioritize safeguarding their poultry through the implementation of secure enclosures. Recognizing the fox's penchant for attacking chickens, these enclosures are fortified with sturdy fencing and appropriate roofing. The primary objective is clear. Create an impregnable fortress that not only shields the poultry from cunning foxes, but also lays the groundwork for a comprehensive fox management plan. The essence of these secure enclosures lies in their construction. The fencing is designed to withstand the crafty attempts of foxes to breach their perimeter. Robust materials and construction techniques ensure that the enclosure serves as an effective barrier against potential intruders. Equally important is the roofing, which adds an overhead layer of protection, preventing any attempts at infiltration from above. Farmers understand that the battle against foxes requires a multifaceted approach. Secure enclosures act as the frontline defense, creating a safe haven for poultry where they can thrive without the constant threat of fox attacks. This proactive measure not only protects the livelihood of farmers, but also contributes to the overall stability of the farming ecosystem. Additionally, the role of guardian animals emerges as a powerful strategy. Some farmers enlist the help of vigilant protectors, such as Anatolian shepherds and Marema sheepdogs, to act as deterrents to foxes. These furry guardians play a crucial role in the defense of livestock, employing various tactics to keep cunning predators at bay. The presence of guardian animals alone can significantly reduce the risk of fox predation on livestock. These animals, known for their protective instincts, act as a living barrier between the vulnerable flock and potential threats. Whether it's a direct confrontation or disruptive behavior aimed at deterring foxes, guardian animals become integral members of the farming community. Farmers value the partnership with these furry protectors, recognizing the unique skills they bring to the table. In the ongoing quest for effective fox control, the addition of guardian animals adds a layer of defense that complements other strategies, creating a more resilient and secure farming environment. Shooting is also a method requiring skill, precision, and a keen understanding of the nocturnal habits of these cunning predators. Farmers, equipped with spotlighting tools and thermal rifle scopes, engage in strategic shooting during late summer and early autumn when foxes are most active. While shooting stands out as a targeted and humane approach, farmers are aware of its limitations. The effectiveness of shooting is not a one-size-fits-all solution, as it can make foxes more wary and less visible over time. The method's success often hinges on the timing of the operation and the skill of the farmer, making it a valuable but supplementary tool in the broader fox control arsenal. The choice of weapons and technology underscores the commitment of farmers to protect their livestock. The use of spotlighting or thermal rifle scopes enhances visibility during the crucial hours of darkness when foxes are on the prowl. Farmers recognize that precision is key, as a well-executed shot contributes to the ongoing effort to curb the impact of foxes on agricultural endeavors. Trapping plays a role that demands both time and consideration of animal welfare. While recognized as a labor-intensive method, some farmers turn to trapping as part of their integrated approach to fox management. 
The Prevention of Cruelty to Animals Act 1986 sets the stage for humane trapping practices, ensuring that the welfare of both target and non-target species is a priority. Despite its potential effectiveness, trapping comes with limitations. The rapid reinvasion of foxes from surrounding areas means that trapping alone may not offer a sustainable long-term solution. Farmers engaging in trapping must navigate the balance between the need for effective fox control and the ethical treatment of animals, making informed decisions guided by regulations and a commitment to responsible farming practices. Integrated fox control often involves the use of baiting, with 1080 poison being a prominent tool. This lethal poison is registered for use on various pests, including foxes. Farmers carefully follow regulations, ensuring proper bait placement and adherence to safety measures to minimize the impact on non-target species. Baits can be strategically deployed, considering critical stages of the fox's life cycle for optimal effectiveness. Foxes are habitual creatures, often reusing dens year after year. Farmers employ fumigation techniques using carbon monoxide to target active breeding or natal dens. This method is strategically implemented when vixens and cubs are confined to the den during specific months. Deep ripping machinery may also be used to destroy dens when accessible. Regular den checks and fumigation are crucial to disrupting the fox breeding cycle. Farmers face ongoing challenges in maintaining effective fox control. The territorial nature of foxes means that even after successful control efforts, new foxes may quickly fill the vacant territories. This constant vigilance and adaptation of control strategies are necessary for sustained success. Now, how would farmers deal with a predator capable of producing lethal toxins? You'll find out in a moment. Cane toads, an amphibian native to northern South America, Central America, and southern Texas, entered the Australian landscape in 1935 with a seemingly noble purpose, controlling the cane beetle, a threat to sugarcane crops. Little did anyone anticipate the far-reaching consequences that would follow. These toads, scientifically known as Bufo marinus, quickly adapted to their new surroundings and embarked on a relentless expansion across the Australian tropics and subtropics, reaching as far as Western Australia. The unintended outcome of their introduction has turned into a significant environmental challenge. What makes these toads particularly problematic is their invasive nature and the cascade of effects they unleash. Cane toads are not merely invaders, they are toxic invaders. Their entire life cycle contains bufadienolides, toxic substances that are lethal to a variety of predators. This unique problem sets them apart, creating a complex scenario that demands attention. The insidious nature of cane toads lies in their toxicity, which is primarily attributed to bufadienolides, a group of alkaloid substances. These toxic compounds pose a grave threat to vertebrates, triggering detrimental effects upon ingestion. The entire life cycle of Bufo marinus, commonly known as cane toads, harbors bufadienolides, resulting in a lethal concoction that proves fatal to unsuspecting predators. The impact on native predators is profound, with documented cases of death following ingestion or even attempted ingestion of cane toads. The toad toxin initiates a complex sequence of physiological events targeting the sodium-potassium pump, Na plus K plus AT pace. This disruption leads to a positive inotropic effect, causing an increased force of contraction in the heart and subsequently cardiovascular constriction and failure. Such effects have been observed across various species, including lizards, crocodiles, snakes, quolls, and domestic animals. Laboratory experiments underscore the low tolerance levels of certain predators, particularly most species of Australian snakes, to these toad toxins. Reports from the 1970s suggest that cane toads became serious predators of native insect species, further exacerbating their impact on the ecological balance. 
The IUCN and Invasive Species Specialist Group acknowledged the cane toad as one of the world's 100 worst invaders, highlighting the severity of its ecological repercussions. As the Australian federal government officially recognizes the cane toad as a key threatening process under environmental protection laws, the imperative to develop effective control strategies becomes increasingly critical. Farmers grapple with the direct impact of cane toads on their crops as these amphibians display a prodigious appetite for a wide range of invertebrates and small vertebrates. In sugarcane fields, where delicate ecological balances are crucial for successful cultivation, the unchecked proliferation of cane toads disrupts this equilibrium. Their voracious predation not only affects the indigenous insect population, but also puts native frogs and other fauna at risk. The challenges extend beyond immediate crop consumption. Cane toads' resistance to desiccation enables them to thrive in various conditions, including the arid environments prevalent during tropical Australia's dry season. Their adaptability exacerbates the difficulties faced by farmers, as traditional control measures prove ineffective against these resilient invaders. The economic implications for agriculture are substantial, with potential declines in crop yields and increased pest-related issues. Furthermore, the ecological consequences ripple through the farm ecosystem, leading to shifts in species composition and interactions. As farmers navigate these challenges, the need for effective control methods becomes imperative to safeguard both agricultural livelihoods and the delicate balance of farm ecosystems. When it comes to curbing the effect and impact of cane toads, one strategy involves the physical removal of these invasive amphibians. This method entails manually capturing and removing toads from affected areas. While the idea of direct intervention seems straightforward, the practical implementation faces challenges. Cane toads breed prolifically, making it difficult to curb their population solely through manual removal. Moreover, the sheer scale of their invasion across vast territories poses logistical challenges, emphasizing the need for supplementary control measures. Habitat management emerges as another avenue for mitigating the impact of cane toads. By manipulating the environment to discourage breeding, targeted interventions can impede their life cycle. This approach involves altering conditions that favor their reproduction, such as modifying water features where they lay eggs. However, the effectiveness of habitat management is contingent on the ability to implement changes on a large scale and poses additional complexities in remote regions where the invasive toads have established strongholds. While exploring biological control methods to combat the cane toad onslaught, scientists are exploring the potential of genetically modified organisms, GMOs, designed to target specific traits in cane toads, such as disrupting their metamorphosis. However, this avenue poses significant challenges, including risk assessments for non-target species and the potential environmental impact of releasing modified organisms. While biological control methods hold promise, the intricate web of ecological interactions demands careful consideration and ongoing research to develop effective and sustainable solutions. In confronting the menace of cane toads, it is imperative to recognize the unique threat they pose as toxic invaders in Australia. A holistic approach to control their spread is essential considering physical removal, habitat management, and ongoing research into biological control.